this whole committee was asked in a questionnaire, is there a need for additional studies on red number 40? 93% of the committee said yes, 7% said no. We talked last time about the prevalence of artificial red food dyes in scientific experiments. Today I want to talk about the prevalence in your food. Start with this paper and the health issues. And let's start with this paper, 2016, called Prevalence of Artificial Food Coloring Colors in Grocery Store Products Marketed to Children. It's a scientific study in Clinical Pediatrics Journal looking at how much red food coloring, or how much dye in general, all these artificial colorings. Sure enough, the research team, they looked at 810 food products in, in a standard American grocery store, and they found over 350 of those products contained artificial food coloring. That's over 40% of all the foods they looked at. The most common artificial food coloring was red number 40 at 30% of those products. Red number 40, let's go into details on that in terms of your health. 1994, the Journal of Toxicology. Got a paper here called Reproductive and Neurobehavioral Effects of Allura Red AC. What's Allura Red AC? That's red 40. Administered to mice in the diet. Now mice and rats, they're better at clearing some of this stuff. I don't like to see them as a model, or at least as the ultimate model. But let's look at this study. So they gave it, they gave them red food coloring, red 40 in their diet, uh, up to about one and a half percent of their diet, so quite a lot, but they had lower doses. And they looked at multiple generations, and they said they found few adverse effects, again, it's mice, but still, few adverse effects, that's good. But the ratio of male to female mice was significantly reduced in the lowest dosed group. What does that mean? There's less males, why? because these are artificial estrogen chemicals. So you find some unique health problems associated with artificial estrogen chemicals. It's not your usual, you know, genotoxic cancer-causing chemical, although they do cause breast cancer. So, you know, these, these artificial estrogens. Let's look at this paper, 2007 Food Additives, it's called and hyperactive behavior in three-year-old and eight and nine-year-old children in the community. A randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial. This is what we've been waiting for, something in humans and a larger study, 150 people on, uh, that were three years old, over about 150 people that were eight and nine-year-old. And they looked at observed behaviors and ratings by teachers and parents uh, for these different groups eight and nine year old, three year old. Um, they also for the older group, the eight and nine year old kids, they did a computerized test of attention. And what did they find? Artificial colors. Now they had mixed, they, they mixed colors. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a great study. And or sodium benzoate, that's the preservative. And that's also been shown to have some hyperactivity issues, of course. Artificial colors or and or sodium benzoate in the diet uh, increased hyperactivity in three-year-old and eight and nine-year-old children in the general population. All right, so let's move on. 2017, 2017. We've got a paper here called Lack of Genotoxicity in Vivo for Food Color Additive Red 40. Allura AC. Allura Red AC. Again, 2017. Um, so they said they, they did these bone marrow micronucleus assays and comet assays. So they're basically looking at genotoxicity, DNA toxicity. And why did they do that? Because they want to, they want to see whether it's going to cause cancer. It's more likely to cause cancer if you're harming the DNA. They looked at the liver, stomach, and colon and found no genotoxicity concern for red number 40. Again, so I don't think there is a genotoxicity concern. At least that's what the studies indicate. In other words, with this particular red food coloring, I don't think it's cutting up your DNA or acting in a strange carcinogenic way like a lot of artificial chemicals do, but I still think there's a likelihood that it's going to cause cancer in the long term, long term, which is not usually studied, because it's acting like estrogen. And when you start throwing off those hormone balances, you do increase cancer, but it's not through chopping up your DNA. It's not through genotoxicity. 
Okay, so the studies, again, they're kind of hit or miss, they're not excellent. And I wanna talk for a second about the regulatory aspect. Why isn't this illegal? Well, again, the studies, they're not super clear. There's not a lot of them, really. I had to look pretty hard even to find these studies. And let's focus in on that for just a second. This is really incredible. 2012 Scientific Journal article called Artificial Food Coloring and Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Symptoms, Conclusions to Die For. Die, D-Y-E, like food dye. So this is kind of a review paper, specifically talking about you know, why this stuff is legal, should it be made illegal, kind of considering all of these things. They say these are artificial red food coloring has been studied for more than 35 years with accumulating evidence from imperfect studies. Which is crazy because again, almost half of our food has this stuff. Over 40% of the food in the standard grocery store has artificial food coloring, and most of that's red 40. They say in this paper, flaws in many studies include non-standardized diagnosis, questionable sample selection, they have this whole list of all these flaws from all these studies, and yet the FDA uh, Food Advisory Committee held a hearing and they voted eight to six not to recommend banning artificial food coloring or requiring a warning label like they do in Europe. In Europe, they require a warning label if you're gonna use red food coloring. Um, but what's interesting is kind of the history in this paper. This is a good paper, and it goes through this history in the 1970s with this guy, Dr. Benjamin Feingold. Now, apparently he wrote a best-selling book called Why Your Child is Hyperactive in the 70s, created a lot of, you know, parental concern, just a lot of attention on the red food coloring. And even back then though, right, remember, the studies weren't really there. There wasn't a lot of studies, just like there is today. There's not a lot of studies. And in fact, at the time of writing this paper that I'm looking at, this food advisory committee was asked, um, the, is there a need for additional studies? So yeah, they made it illegal. Uh, they made it legal. It's still legal. There's no warning label. But they were asked. This whole committee was asked in a questionnaire: Is there a need for additional studies on red number forty? Ninety-three percent of the committee said yes. Seven percent said no. Ninety-three of them are saying yeah. There's a need for additional studies, but we're still going to make it legal. All right, we're still going to have it, and that's kind of one of the issues in in our culture in America is that we legalize these chemicals and then we wait until the data starts coming in, just pouring in. We wait until the floodgates are opened with the data. And honestly, again, like I said last time, watch the last video, the previous video, artificial red food dye acts like estrogen in your body. And I mean, that's a concern. That's enough of a concern where we shouldn't need to wait until the long-term data starts coming in. But, you know, I think err on the side of making these chemicals illegal and then make them legal after they're shown to be you know, safe in the long term in multi-generational studies when we're talking about artificial estrogen chemicals.